Dial-up Internet Dial-up Internet became publicly available in 1992 when ISPs in the US and UK first offered it to consumers. The core idea existed long before that with systems like Usernet from 1979, but 1992 was when regular people could finally get online from home. Dial-up connects the computer to the internet using a modem and a standard telephone line. And for years, it was the main way people accessed the web, but the process is simple. The computer's modem plugs into the phone jack. It dials the ISP's number, and both modems perform a handshake, exchanging analog tones to agree on connection setting. The modem turns digital data into analog audio for the phone line, while the ISP turns it back into digital data. Because the entire line is occupied, you can't use the phone for calls while you're online. Speeds are extremely limited. Even though the theoretical maximum is 56 kbps, real speeds usually land between 40 and 50 kbps, and sometimes lower if the line has noise or if you're far from the telephone exchange. Latency is also very high, often 100 to 220 milliseconds or more, making real-time tasks like gaming, streaming video, or VoIP nearly impossible. Modern broadband, by comparison, often stays below 70 milliseconds. Today, dial-up is mostly used in remote areas where broadband isn't available or affordable. It works for basic tasks like checking text-only emails or loading very simple web Websites. It's cheap and widely available, but extremely slow, blocks phone calls, and suffers from high latency. DSL, Digital Subscriber Line, or DSL, is a family of technologies that sends digital data over the same copper telephone lines used in most homes. Unlike dial-up, DSL gives you an always-on connection and doesn't block your phone line because it uses higher frequency bands that voice calls don't touch. DSL first became commercially available in the United States in the mid-1990s, with major deployments starting around 1998 from providers like SBC Communications. It became popular in the early 2000s as a major upgrade from dial-up. The technology works by using a DSL modem in the home and a splitter or microfilter on the phone jacks to keep high-frequency data separate from low-frequency voice. On the provider side, your modem connects to a DSLAM at the ISP's central office, which sends your data to the internet backbone. Most home connections use ADSL, where downloads are faster than uploads, while symmetric DSL is used mainly by businesses needing equal speeds. DSL speeds vary depending on the distance from your home to the ISP's central office. ADSL can deliver around 3 to 25 megabits per second downloads, sometimes up to 50 megabits per second, with uploads between 512 kilobits per second and 3 megabits per second. Newer VDSL can reach up to 100 megabits per second over shorter distances. Latency is much better than dial-up, usually between 10 and 60 milliseconds, making activities like streaming, video calls, and gaming possible. DSL is best for small households or areas where cable isn't available but phone lines are. It's affordable, widely accessible, and offers consistent speeds because the line isn't shared with neighbors but performance drops with distance, upload speeds are limited, and overall speeds are slower compared to cable and fiber. Satellite Internet Instead of using cables underground, it uses satellites orbiting the Earth. Your home dish sends a signal up, the satellite relays it to a ground station on Earth, and the Internet comes back to you the same way. Older systems use big satellites sitting very high in space, about 22,000 miles up. They work, but the distance makes everything feel slow. Newer systems, like Starlink, use small satellites much closer to Earth, around 300 miles, so data travels faster and the delay is much lower. Because of that, speeds vary. Older setups usually give about 12 to 25 megabits download, while modern low-orbit networks can reach 50 to 200 megabits per second. Uploads improve too. The biggest difference is latency. Old systems often feel laggy, but new low-orbit ones stay closer to what you'd get from cable or DSL. Satellite internet fits best in places where other options simply don't exist. Remote homes, farms, small towns, cabins, RVs, even boats. It's good for browsing, streaming, and everyday online work, especially with the newer systems. But the trade-offs include weather sensitivity, possible data caps, and the higher cost of equipment. 
Fixed Wireless Internet Fixed wireless internet is a broadband connection that uses focused radio signals instead of cables. The idea has existed for decades, but it started becoming a real consumer service in the late 1990s and early 2000s through early wireless local loop system. As radio technology improved through the mid-2000s, fixed wireless became faster, more reliable, and a practical alternative for areas without wired broadband. The system works through a direct line of sight link. Providers place broadcasting equipment on towers or rooftop, usually fed by fast fiber connections. At your home, a small outdoor antenna is installed with a clear view of that tower. Once the signal reaches your antenna, it travels through an Ethernet cable into an indoor modem or router, giving you normal home internet access. Real-world speeds typically range from 25 to 100 Mbps, with newer setups reaching 300 to 500 Mbps. Upload speeds are lower, and latency usually sits around 20 to 70 milliseconds, much smoother than old satellite systems and usable for streaming, browsing, and general everyday tasks. Fixed wireless works best in rural and suburban areas where wired options are limited, but you still have a clear line of sight to a nearby tower. It's less effective in dense cities or heavily blocked areas with trees, hills, or tall buildings. The trade-offs are line of sight requirements, weather sensitivity, and occasional speed variation. Broadband over power line, BPL, is a technology that tries to deliver internet using the same electrical wires that power home. Instead of installing fiber or coax, data signals are layered on top of the normal electrical current. The idea became popular in the early 2000s, but it never became a mainstream consumer service. BPL works by injecting high-frequency data signals into medium-voltage power line. Because the signal weakens quickly and cannot pass through transformers, utilities add repeaters and bypass units along the line. In the home, a BPL modem plugs into a wall outlet and separates the data from the electrical power, turning it into Ethernet for your router. Typical performance ranged from 3 to 45 megabits per second, with latency around 20 to 70 milliseconds, but both could vary heavily due to electrical noise. These limitations made BPL less reliable than cable or fiber, and caused interference with radio communications, one of its biggest challenges. Today, BPL is mostly used for smart grids and utility monitoring. Inside homes, power line adapters remain useful for extending an existing internet connection. Mobile internet, cellular network, is the technology that lets phones and hotspots get online through cell towers instead of cables. It began with early 2G data in the early 2000s, slow but groundbreaking. By the mid-2000s, 3G made everyday browsing practical. Then 4G LTE arrived around 2010 and completely changed mobile use, making HD streaming, fast downloads, and app-heavy smartphones feel normal. Today's 5G networks, first introduced in 2019, push performance even further with faster speeds and much lower latency. The system works through a coordinated radio network. Your phone uses its SIM and internal modem to connect to the nearest cell tower. Data travels as radio signals to that tower, which is connected to the provider's core network through high-speed fiber. As you move, your connection is smoothly handed off from tower to tower. Each new generation, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, uses smarter ways of encoding data, resulting in higher speeds and quicker response time. Real-world performance depends on tower distance, congestion, and network quality. On 4G LTE, users typically get around 10 to 50 megabits per second. Modern 5G commonly delivers 50 to 300 megabits per second, upload speeds are lower, and latency continues to improve. About 30 to 60 milliseconds on 4G and 10 to 25 milliseconds on 5G under good conditions. Because it works anywhere with coverage, mobile internet is all about flexibility. It keeps smartphones online everywhere while commuting, traveling, or moving between locations. It can also serve as home internet in rural areas through 4G and 5G home broadband plans, and many people use it as a reliable backup connection. Mobile internet's biggest strength is convenient. No cables, no installation, and wide coverage. Modern 5G can even rival wired broadband in many places. The trade-off is that speeds can vary and costs depend heavily on the data plan. 
cable internet is a broadband connection that delivers high-speed access through the same hybrid fiber coaxial cables used for cable TV. It first became commercially available in the mid-1990s, with the first service launching in 1996 in Hartford, Connecticut. Adoption grew rapidly in the late 1990s and early 2000s as the DOCIS standard matured. The technology works by using the unused frequency space on coaxial TV cables. A cable modem in the home connects to the provider through the coaxial line, and all data travels to a CMTS located at the cable operator's head end. Because everyone in a neighborhood segment shares the same line, cable internet operates as a shared medium, which is why speeds may change depending on how many people are online. TV signals and internet data use different frequency bands, allowing both to run on a single cable without interference. Real-world speeds vary depending on the plan, congestion, and DOCIS version. Typical download speeds range from 50 megabits per second to 500 megabits per second, while high-end plans reach 1,000 megabits per second or more with DOCIS 3.1. Upload speeds are usually much lower, ranging from 5 megabits per second to 50 megabits per second. Latency is generally low, around 10 to 40 milliseconds, making cables suitable for gaming, streaming, and video calls. Its main advantages are fast download speeds, wide availability, and strong performance for modern applications. The main drawbacks are slower uploads and potential slowdowns during peak hours because of shared bandwidth, along with generally higher pricing compared to basic DSL. Fiber optic internet uses tiny strands of glass or plastic to send data as pulses of light. It's the fastest and most reliable home internet today, far outperforming older copper systems like DSL and cable. Although the concept has existed for decades, true fiber to the home began rolling out in the early 2000s, with major deployments around 2004-2005. Fiber is different because it carries information using light instead of electricity. In full FTTH setups, the fiber runs runs directly from the provider to the home and connects to an optical network terminal, which converts the light signal for your Wi-Fi router. This design naturally supports equal download and upload speed. In real use, fiber is extremely fast and consistent. Entry plans start around 300 to 500 Mbps, many offer 1 to 2 Gbps, and premium areas can reach 5 to 10 Gbps. Latency is also extremely low, usually between 1 and 10 milliseconds making gaming, video calls, and cloud apps feel smooth and instant. Fiber is perfect for busy homes, creators, and remote workers who need stable performance. Its main strengths are speed, reliability, symmetrical uploads, and resistance to interference. The main drawback is availability. Not all areas have fiber yet, and installation often requires new physical line, which can increase upfront costs. Okay, watch my video on every Ethernet cable category explained and subscribe to my channel if this video truly helps you. All right?